It is now my distinct pleasure to present a man named Charlie Plum. A few years ago, he wrote a book called I'm No Hero. Well, that's a lie because he is a hero. Charlie is an ex-Navy pilot with 75 combat missions in Vietnam under his belt. If he had to do it all over again, he says, he would have stopped at 74. On his last mission, he was shot down just south of Hanoi, captured by the North Vietnamese and brutally tortured. He spent the next 60 years of his life in a POW camp where he was fed a daily diet of degradation, humiliation, and physical abuse. Charlie looks upon his survival from this ordeal as the triumph of an ordinary man. He was repatriated back to America in 1973 and since then has spoken to over 2,500 groups about the inner strengths in each of us that help us overcome adversity. His message is timely, and though the circumstances are dramatically different, I know you'll find personal meaning in his remarks. While in prison, Charlie distinguished himself among his fellow POWs for his ready smile and his good words. He brought both with him tonight to help us pay honor on this, the traditional observance of Memorial Day. Charlie is no stranger to many in the United family. He's an ardent member of the United Plus, having logged over 100,000 miles on United in the last three years. Rumor has it he's going on the shuttle flight in order to make up that uh, 100,000. Here he is, captain in the U.S. Naval Reserve, a commercial rated pilot, and a personal friend of many of you in our far-flung audiences with friendships dating back to his days at Annapolis Naval Flight Training and Squadron Duty. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a deep honor for me to present Charlie Plot. The prison cell that I was in in Vietnam was eight feet long and eight feet wide. I could pace three steps one way and then turn around and pace three steps the other. Inside the cell, no books to read, no window to look out, no TV, telephone, radio. I didn't have a pencil or a piece of paper for 2,103 days. <clears throat> I had three steps one way and three steps the other. I don't know what you would have done. I was going stir crazy in that cell. I finally decided, Charlie, you gotta come up with something to do. You gotta go crazy in here. I thought that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll make a little game to play, and I did. I constructed a little deck of playing cards about the size of postage stamps, I tore these cards from 52 little strips of toilet paper. And I can tell you this with authority, it stuffed the shuffle. <laughs> Fellow pilots and supporters, I'm proud to be with you. Well, I don't deserve to call myself a member of your family. I've been accepted as one, and so I will. And I think in some small way, way, we share a lot of similarities. We've been through military training together. I have shipmates and classmates. I have squadron mates in this audience. We've been through rigorous professional flight training together, and we've been through those cold, dark nights flying down to minimums together. And you've served me well on hundreds of thousands of miles, and for that I appreciate it. But something may be in a larger sense which we share. I think my background and yours, we share the courage to stand up for what we think is right, the guts to survive, and the commitment to win. 
And in the audience gathered here, I feel that you represent a large number of parachute packers. Let me explain that to you. My wife and I sat down in a restaurant not so long ago. About two tables over, a guy looked at me and I looked back at him. I didn't recognize this gent. He stood up a few minutes later and he walked over to our table and he looked down at me and he pointed his finger in my face and with a stern look on his, he said, you're plumb. <laughs> I looked up and I said, yes sir, I'm plumb. He said, you flew jet fighters in Vietnam. You were on the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. You were shot down, you parachuted in the enemy hands and you spent six years as a prisoner of war. I said, how in the world did you know that? He said, I packed your parachute. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, for this professional public speaker, my chin was down here on my chest. The very best I could do was stagger to my feet, reach out a very grateful hand of thanks. I was speechless, but this guy came up with just the proper words. He grabbed my hand, he pumped my arm, and he said, I guess it worked. <laughs> I said, yes, sir, indeed it did. And I must tell you, I've said a lot of prayers of thanks for your nimble fingers, but I didn't realize I'd have the opportunity of, of saying thanks in person. He said, were all the panels there? <laughs> well, sir, I must shoot straight with you. Of the 18 panels that were supposed to be in that parachute, I had 15 good ones. Three were torn, but it wasn't your fault. It was mine. I jumped out of that bird at a high rate of speed, close to the ground. That's what tore the panels in the parachute. It wasn't the way you packed it. I said, let me ask you a question. You keep track of all the parachutes you pack? <laughs> he said, no. And I think this is the most important part of the conversation. Maybe it's the most important thing I'll say this evening. He said to me, and I think this deals directly with the reason for our meeting. He said, he said, no, it's enough gratification for me just to know that I've helped somebody out along life's rocky road. I didn't get much sleep that night. I kept thinking about this dude. I kept wondering what he might have looked like in a Navy uniform, a Dixie cup cap and a bib in the back and a bell-bottom trousers. I wondered how many times I might have passed him on board that ship, how many times I might have seen him on Liberty Call, and I didn't say, good morning, how are you? Nothing, because after all, you see, I was a fighter pilot. And he was just a sailor. And how many hours on that long wooden table in the bowels of that ship did he weave the shrouds and fold the silks and do a standard to mediocre job I could have cared less well, yeah, until one day, my parachute came along and he packed mine for me. And so the question is this, gang, how's your parachute packing coming along? And who in this crowd is packing your parachute? You see, I think in times of trial, we all need that kind of support group. We all need those folks that step out in front and say yes. I'll help. Well, my parachute was pretty well packed when I was shot down over enemy territory. My physical parachute, my mental parachute, my emotional parachute, my spiritual parachute, pretty well in place. And it all began in a little bitty town in Kansas. Grew up in a, a, a very small town, 325 souls and a couple of Presbyterians. <laughs> I, I love the town. <laughs> And my parachute was packed with my dad and my mom and my big sister and my two little brothers and the coach named Smith. Clancy Smith was a World War I veteran, still had some shrapnel in one leg. And we were to be the last team he would ever coach. The fellow was 65 years old and he was a tough hombre and we didn't have a very good team. And we were down to the very last game and our, our season it was, was one and seven and we wanted to win that last game just for the coach but we didn't, we lost, and I'll never forget walking back to the locker room, and Coach Smith came up to me, and he put his arm over my sweaty shoulder, and I looked up at him somewhat intimidated, and I said, I'm sorry, Coach, I, I, guess, we're, I guess we're just a bunch of losers. 
and he squeezed my shoulder and he sunk his fingernails into my flesh and he said, son, whether you think this team is a bunch of losers or a bunch of winners, you're right.